First, the occupants said that they did not pose a threat towards civilians. At the same time, they began shelling central squares and residential complexes. Now Russian soldiers are keeping small towns near Kiev under siege. In a suburban city near the capital, named Bucha, there is no electricity, heating or connection to the outside world. The enemy shoots anyone who tries to leave, even children. Throughout 10 days of war, Russian killed 38 and injured 71 Ukrainian children. As was reported by the Commissioner for Human Rights of the Verkhovna Rada, Lyudmila Denisova. Furthermore, those numbers are not exhaustive, as there is no data about the killed and injured from Mariupol and Irpin. Ukrainians from the south tell the occupants to go home. Sirens continue to ring in cities. Russian soldiers shell towns using Grad-type missiles, taking cover in densely populated areas. Ukrainian journalist Andrei Dubchak recorded how Russian soldiers deliberately attacked civilians who tried to leave Irpin. What was happening with the kids yesterday? It was bad. We were evacuating kids, civilians. Shit! 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 This is a fact, a documented fact. They see everything from the houses in Irpin. A woman, a boy, a teen girl died in front of my eyes. A man was heavily injured. They must have been a family, wrote Andre on his webpage. This is UA, the day that we survived. Ukrainian journalists have come together with people to create this project. The Minister of Defense Alexei Reznikov reports that the Ukrainian sky is most vulnerable right now. The aggressor does not hesitate to use its air and missile capabilities. Meanwhile, 80% of Americans believe the United States of America should stop buying oil from Russia. 74% support USA and NATO closing off Ukrainian airspace. Every day we receive new reports about ordinary Ukrainian cities being shelled. Kiev is still holding on. This recording was sent by a capital's resident who did not leave her home. Marina from Cherkasse Oblast tells us about the first day of war. During this period of time she felt a wide variety of emotions. We had a military base near our town in the Rosishki village. 24th of February was the night when we lost this military base and were woken up after a big explosion, a number of explosions on this military base. I woke up at 5.33 from a vast sound and explosion seen from my window from my flat. And I didn't understand what is happening. I was screaming and uh, I woke up my mother and she said that it's like city lights from near town Oman. But uh, another explosion was heard. Our windows were shaken and sound was terrifying. We were scared and uh, started to gather uh, 
money, do documents, clothes, all necessary things to take uh, to shelter. I was running to my neighbors and woken them waking them up and uh, knocking the doors but nobody uh, nobody opened the doors and our shelter down f um, the flat was closed so I came back to my flat and we switched our TV to see what news was translated on TV, was broadcasted on TV. And uh, our journalists uh, said that it was like uh, training from our soldiers. But a few moments later, it was said that Russia invaded, invaded in Ukraine and started uh, a war against our people and our cities and our country. We didn't sleep for four days. We didn't eat for four days. We were scared at any small noise, any small sound. You just trying to sleep, but you woke up every five minutes to check news, to check telephone, to check that your relatives had informed you and told you that something happened. You check news to find something good to to calm you down. You are just in the news flow every every single minute. And today is the ninth day of this war. And after all possible feelings, I'm empty inside. I have nothing to tell. I have nothing to feel. Just anger and hate to Russian people who kill our little children, who kill our people, who destroy our cities, who rape our women, who kill our soldiers, our protectors, nothing else, just anger and hate. And I'm lost in all this situation, I don't know what to do, where to run, whom to help first, just hoping to survive one another night to survive another day and to pray that another air raid is just false air raid without bombing people are protesting in occupied cities on the 6th of march people joined their rallies with ukrainian flags in their hands against russians in novokohovka The Zhitomir route area is still the hottest spot. Residential complexes in Korostan and Omruj were shelled, several private houses destroyed. No less than three people have been injured as a consequence of missile strikes on Starokonstantinov airdrome. All of this is happening in central Ukraine. Shelling continue in the east of Ukraine as well. Because of skirmishes in Luhansk, a couple of pumping stations were cut off from the power supply. Evelina from Lysychansk tells us about the morning of the 5th of March in her hometown. You have to be a complete bastard to start bombarding at 7 a.m. when the curfew is over and everybody goes to work, on foot and very far. Shops are about to open. I share information on Facebook about the stores that will open for an hour, two or three, and precisely then they start to attack. In Lysychansk, they are bombarding everywhere, from all sides. I don't know. And this doesn't stop for several hours already. We're still sitting in the basement. Today, I didn't even manage to get bread. That's my situation. Well, we keep holding on. Glory to Ukraine. On the 6th of March in Vinnytsia, central Ukraine, a local airport was hit by a missile strike. A military unit was also shelled. The president of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, is once again asking the West to close off Ukrainian airspace. In this day and age, Russians who protest against the war in Russian cities are arrested, hit and sent to prison.
hundreds of thousands of people in occupied cities have no means of communication. A second attempt at establishing a green corridor for civilians resulted in another shelling by Russian soldiers. In Mariupol, evacuation was disrupted by occupants. The locals did not manage to leave the city. It is extremely dangerous to evacuate citizens in current circumstances. The occupants continue to destroy our infrastructure. They use artillery, multiple rocket launcher systems and ballistic rockets. We continuously receive terrifying news. It is difficult to find anything positive in the current situation. But life itself cannot be stopped. Some of our friends announced their pregnancy. The troops of territorial defense, Lesa and Valery, have married. Слава Родині! Родині слава! Слава Україні! Героям слава! Слава нації! Слава Україна! Україна! Понад усе! Ще нам братя українці усміхнеться доля згинуть наші This is how the ordinary start of spring sounds in western Ukraine. We wait when silence and peace will commence throughout all of Ukraine.